595. Yeah, that's that's worth doing. All of them. Hymn number 595. You all have an extra book you can give the piano. All right. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Switch here, don't I? <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let him now endure the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in men. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me, and art become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected is become the headstone of the court. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Say now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send in my prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, which has shown us light, bind the sacrifice before us, even in the dawn of the Lord. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. All together now, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Say amen. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I'm glad you selected that because that gets us going. So uh, for our congregational song, No Never Long.
Amen. 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 And I found that when I wake up with my mind on Jesus, the day goes a whole lot better. Amen. Amen. All right. It's altar prayer time. But we're going to do it where we are. All right. I'm not going to ask you to move. Announcements. We have some announcements? Sure. By all means. Good morning. Mm -hmm. I'd be in trouble, wouldn't I? Let's go right ahead, Larry. It's been a long time since I've A long time. Yes. She did. Okay. Okay. Good morning. 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 On our prayer request, we have Sister Cassandra Mikado, Ruth Baden, Mary Jean Evans, Laura Butler, Elwin Welch, Virginia Baum, Viola Copeland, Reverend Layton White, Sister Maxine Whitehorn, Gail Strachschreier, Evelyn Colbert, Charlene Higgins, Darlene Bennett, and family. Come join with us in prayer service Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Remember, a church that prays together stays together, and it is our goal to have the members in prayer service. Well, come join us this Sunday morning at 9 o'clock for breakfast, then followed by Sunday school at MBTU. Remember, if you know the Bible, the Sunday school needs you. If you don't know the Bible, you need the Sunday school mm -hmm. and MBTU. And this morning we had a big man's breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Our dome ministry mission statement is right before you. So on the count of three, let's recite this together. Three. To the man of God, we look to Christ, to the lost. Bring them to Christ, Christ, build them up in Christ, and send them out for Christ. This afternoon at 5 o'clock in the Guthrie High Street parking lot will be Community Prayer Day. And so Pastor more than likely is taking the lead in this and uh, asking us to join the Ministry of Him and the Ministry of Alliance at 5 o'clock in the parking lot. He says you can stay in your car or you can bring some lawn chairs. There's a little notation here due to, due to the weather, we will have the community citywide hour of prayer, oh, at First Christian Church at 5 p.m. So don't go to the parking lot. <laughs> go to First Christian Church and we know where that is, 5 o'clock. All right. We have a thank you for your expressions of sympathy. God's blessings to you all for your support, thoughts, and prayers. Our mother's homegoing was a glorious day. We will always remember the love of, of our beloved mother as well as the support of, of our kind friend, the Reeves family. Yes. Now, we all know that the, the, the ladies here have taken on a project to paint the uh, six, to paint the fellowship uh, <laughs> hall. And so Brenda Yance, mm -hmm. Sister Brenda Yance is the chairperson of this, and we've been waiting on her to get her dust in a row. So the dust was just about in a row. So I'm understanding now that we have some the uh, young adults for the six in painting. You need to tell us is Saturday or during the week is better. Which one? You let us know which one it is so that we can get it together. We have so many people that want to help. Brother mm -hmm. Herman is going to help us go get the paint, got packed out, so that we can know what we're going to uh, what we're going to do. But anyway, it's on. So we're going to get this together. So we're just waiting on you, Kelly, Brenda, when you're available, the young adults, 
and then we can make it happen. You can't do it this way. You can't do it this way. <laughs> I mean, but I'm not, yeah, you can do without me, but I'm, because I don't think I can take it. But anyway, let's get it together. Let's get going. Do we, at this point, I will ask if we have any visitors that would like to be recognized. If so, please stand at this time, tell us your name and where you're from. And we have, don't have any visitors that would like to be recognized. But what we say to you is that you're very, very welcome at First Baptist, and that you're welcome anytime, but anytime. Any time that you're in the city, you need a church home, or you just might need a church destination, for this first Baptist, number one. It's altar prayer time, and I would ask that you would stand where you are bow your heads as we go to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> Eternal God, our Father, we call on your name today because you have made it possible when you sent your son Jesus who gave his life. And on the cross, the middle wall of petition was torn from top to bottom making direct access to you. God, all powerful, all loving, all kind, to call upon your name in season and out of season. And so we come as a family. Your children, thanking you for this day. We thank you for your love and we thank you that you've allowed us to call on your name and the privilege of prayer. Oh, how we love you because you first loved us because you gave your life for us. No man has a greater love than one who would lay down his life for his brethren, for his friends. And you call us friends. Oh, what a wonderful God you are. We shout hallelujah when we think of your power, your love, your adoration, and your care. We ask now that you would bless. strong and vibrant as he's always has been. We love him. He's done a mighty work for you here at First Church. And so we want him back. We pray for his healing. We pray for those who are sick and shut in. Those who are behind prison walls. Those who are Bereaved, we ask Father for your kindness, for your everything that you do for us as our Father, which are in heaven. Bless and keep us and strengthen us as only you can. Keep us from all hurt, harm, and danger. And Father, we ask that you would forgive us of our many sins. Wash us and cleanse us and make us better in you. It is in the precious, sweet name of Jesus that we thank you for this opportunity once again just to call on your holy and most righteous name. For it is in the precious, sweet name of Jesus that we ask this prayer. All of God's people stay together. Amen, amen, amen. amen. and amen. You may be seated.
thank the Lord for blessing Amen. us right Amen. now. Amen. I didn't stand when they were the, the uh, announcing clerk asked for visitors. I want you to know that this is my third time here. Amen. And uh, after the first time, I was no longer a visitor. Amen. I didn't feel like a visitor. Amen. I know that's right. And especially after having one of those wonderful breakfasts. I mean, tell you, I, uh, I, 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 I'm glad I had room left, you know. <laughs> And so I'll be coming as long as I have room left. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You all have a wonderful congregation here. And I feel quite at home here. And certainly your pastor is a long time friend of mine. And when we talked about him being out for a while, then, uh, as if he had no other uh, decision on that matter. He and the Lord talk, you know. When you hear the Lord talk, then that's what you do, yeah. whatever the Lord says. Yeah. And certainly I was glad that he talked to him about me because yeah. look what he has done Amen. with me and you uh, to make us uh, like family. And we are family. Amen. 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 Amen, amen, amen. I'm not going to prolong the moment. Uh, I'm told that uh, I'm limited. No, I'm told that we are limited. Amen. <laughs> so we want to get on with the word amen. And, and then go on about our other business, all right? Amen. Turn to the book of Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 15. I'm going to pray while you're turning. Father, we thank you for your word today. Without your word, we have no life and we have no direction. We thank you that you have given us your word that we may have all that we need to live your godly life in this world. We ask now that you would bless this word that's been prepared and that for your people today. Bless them and me as we're about this delivery. It is in the precious name of Jesus that I pray. All of God's people sit together. Amen. amen. Amen and amen. All right. One thing that you may not know about me is, is that sometimes when I get into the word, uh, as many times I may have rehearsed it or looked at it or prayed about it, as uh, I, I have to. Sometimes shed a few tears. Uh -huh. So I brought my towel with me. <laughs> Just in case. All right. Um, okay. You may be seated. Uh, I'm going to try to minimize the time that we spend here. And one way is to not read long. Uh, scripture, Acts 15, 1 through 6 is, is a bit lengthy, and I will uh, kind of uh, shorten it just to tell you that there was trouble going on and it needed to be fixed in the church. Yes. And that dealt with whether the Jewish people would accept the Gentile people Amen. just on their profession of faith. The Jewish people had Moses' law, and they also uh, had the act of circumcision that they were wanting the uh, Gentiles to do. And that's what brought this whole situation uh, up for discussion, uh, for a convention to be held even, for them to deal with that. And so the topic of, of my word today bringing to you is Jesus alone. Jesus alone. The world is full of people who will tell you what you need 
If you have a problem, if you want their opinion, they will give it to you. If you don't want their opinion, they will give it to you. Can I get an amen? amen. If you cough in public, <laughs> a sneeze, somebody will probably tell you what your problem is. Mm -hmm. You might say, I will, I've been to Dr. So and so, so and so, and they told me this or that. And uh, they'll say, well, that's all well and good. But doctors don't know everything. That's just the way it is. That's one of the reasons why today's topic is, is Jesus enough? Is Jesus alone? Does that mean, is he enough? They were saying that he was enough in their preaching, but not enough in his teaching. And that's what we have here. These men were Pharisees who had come to faith in Christ but still bound to the old covenant teaching. That was precious to them. For years, they had been dealing with the old covenant methods, the law of Moses and the circumcision that was required to be a Jew. It was powerful for them, and they wanted to Make sure that everyone follows what they had. Is Jesus enough, though? Really, do we believe that, really? Well, there are two sides to this, and both work together beautifully. If Jesus is enough, where should we be telling people to look? You know, that is our job now. Look to Jesus. Look at the word behold means look. It means to pay attention. Behold, Paul had, a, had the boldness to go out into the world, the Gentile, pagan world, mind you, and simply say, look to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Believe in Jesus. Receive Jesus. And the word got back to Jerusalem. And they wondered, what is Paul teaching? He obviously didn't go to seminary. Hey, wait a minute. Paul is a Pharisee, trained by the best, Gabaliel. Well, he, he, we need to just talk with him. So first they decided to go up to Antioch. And when they came to Antioch and started teaching that unless they be circumcised, you cannot be saved. Let's say that that got Paul and Barnabas riled up. Now the New International Version says sharp dispute and debate. The King James Version says no small dissension. And verse 6 says that back in Jerusalem, they met to consider the question they had in Jerusalem. What is the question? Is Jesus enough? Yet throughout scripture, God's call has always been, behold, look, look at me, look to me, repent means exactly that. Turn around and look at me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. Remember the angel said in Luke 10 2, Behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. Look, John the Baptist saw Jesus and told and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taken away the sin of the world. Isaiah, back in the day of, uh, before the New Testament, 4 and 5 says, Turn, that is, look again. Turn to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other. But why, why, why Jesus alone? 
Won't all those other things help? Was there a time, is there a picture in the Old Testament of turning away from the traditional and the God commanded law to be saved alone? Well, I'm glad you asked. Why? A picture of why. In John 3, 14, Jesus is speaking to another Pharisee named Nicodemus. Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the de desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. What did Jesus mean by that? Listen as I read a few of the uh, scriptures from Numbers 21. You Bible readers know this very well. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake unto Moses and against God. Therefore, have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loathes this great. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit them. And finally they said to Moses, Moses, Cry unto God, save us from these servants, for we die. And that's what Moses did. God told him to fashion a brass serpent and put him on a pole and raise him up and let the people know that if they look to that serpent after having been bitten, they would. Survive. And Moses did what God told him to do. And if any man had been bitten, then he lived after looking up to that serpent. In the wilderness, the children of Israel had pondered, what do we do about the snakes? You can be sure they had tried everything. Shooing them away, beating them, running, moving away from them. Wait a minute. Ask God to take them away. <laughs> and that's what they did. But God said, make a snake. Put it on a pole. Look to the snake on the pole. Huh? But those who in their sin look to the image of their oppressor found life. Why? Because God said that this was the way. Can't you hear them now? Moses, I'm going to look to the pole just as soon as I get rid of the snake biting my leg. Moses, I'm going to look to the pole, but first let me take my anti-venom medicine. <laughs> Moses, I'm going to look to the pole, but I, I don't think the pole is going to do anything for me. Verse 9 said, Then anyone who was bitten by a snake and looked at the brass snake, he lived. Now, our snake, our affliction, affliction is venomous and will take our lives. It's called sin. It is the result of our own disobedience. And, and turning up our noses at the provision of God, won't do it. So, God sent his son, Jesus, to become sin for us. And just as Moses put up a snake on the pole while snakes were taking their lives, even so, Jesus became sin. So if we, under the poisonous effects of our sin, will look to the cross, where Christ hung and sinned as sin for us, then we can become the righteousness that's necessary before God. Second Corinthians says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. It seems that they were concerned that Jesus plus nothing might be to reckless freedom. 
<coughs> but Paul said in Romans 6, 1 and 2, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Now why would anyone have a problem with preaching that the way is Jesus alone? Hear this word. Believe. It is obvious that these Pharisees did not believe that Jesus alone was enough. Going to sell anti venom and state repellent and include it alongside Jesus. They were attempting to create um, an obligation for the people apart from Jesus. We're very guilty of this sometimes in the church, are we not? We give people jobs and responsibilities so that they will be obligated to be in faith. I've had some of those over the years. I got to go because I have this to do and I have that to do. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Our obligation, you don't have to say amen to that. Our obligation should be to God in Christ alone. Yes. Our job in the church is to be able to point to Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. The only one to whom they are obligated. Yes. Amen? Yes. People who are obligated to us are missing it. You should not be attending because you have good music or good preaching. And yes, we do on both of those. Or because you have a job to do that you can't get out of. <laughs> you should not tithe or give because we've done something for you or, or it's what you are obligated to do. You do it because you are obligated to Christ and Christ alone. You should attend. You should follow Jesus. You should give to the church. You should serve in ministry because you are obligated to Jesus and Jesus alone. Yeah. Because I believe, rather I know, yeah. that he is the only hope we have for life and eternity. Amen. And you are, I am, we are obligated to him, Jesus and Jesus alone. Amen. If we believe that it is Jesus alone, we need to shout. Amen. We need to tell it. Yeah. We need to proclaim it. Uh -huh. We need to trust it everywhere we go. Yeah. Paul said in Romans 1, 15, So as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel. Preach it to you who are in Rome also, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to anyone who believes. For the Jew first and also the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. 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 Paul said, I am ready to preach the gospel. One version says, eager. Why? Because the gospel can change the world. Change it through the hearts of men and women and boys and girls. Paul was convinced that the gospel could live up to and exceed what it had promised. And when we add to the gospel, as these Pharisees did, it is evidence that we do not know or do not believe that Jesus is enough. We're not calling people to look to Jesus out of curiosity, but to believe in faith. Uh -huh. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved. Mm -hmm. That is through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Mm -hmm. Not of works, not of, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Mm -hmm. God forbid, forbid that we should ever believe in word or in action. That Jesus is not enough by himself. If you belong to Christ, then you are 
Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What Paul is saying is that you might not look like an heir yet. But if Christ's blood is in you, you will start to look like him before long. When our children are born, there is much speculation as to who they look like. Amen? Usually they're just wrinkly, crying, and blushing face. One big time comedian, I won't call his name, says that his firstborn said it didn't look right. It didn't look like it was done. And he told the doctor to put it back in and let it cook a little while longer. <laughs> well, you can't put them back in. But you can't feed them. You can't spend time with them. Love them, train them, and guess what? They will start to look like you because it was in their genetics to look like you. Protect them. They are starting to act like you because they are spending time with you. Point them to Jesus. Uh -huh. Say, behold, look, this is Jesus. Look to his voice. Listen to his voice. Walk in his ways. Know his heart. Yes. Guess what Bible study and scripture memory and church attendance and ministry help you to see? Not guess what, but who? Uh -huh. Jesus. Yes. Behold, Nothing else. Psalms 119 says, Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. I believe that if we would look to Jesus and Jesus alone, you will put aside all the other stuff. It will become useless. You will have no room for anything else because you will be looking to him. Our call should be, don't look to the snakes. Don't look to the snake charmers. Don't look to the anti-venom or snake repellent salesmen. Behold, look to the serpent on the pole. Do you remember what got them in trouble in the book of Numbers? It says they got impatient on the way. It says they are uh, we, when we get impatient, when Jesus doesn't work fast enough for us, that's what happens with us. Remember this about Jesus. Ben Price wrote this. It was alone the Savior prayed in dark Gethsemane. Alone he drained the bitter cup and suffered for me. It was alone the Savior stood in Pilate's judgment hall. Alone the crown of thorns he wore, forsaken thus by all. Alone upon the cross he hung, that others he might save, forsaken then by God and man, alone his life he gave. Can you reject such matchless love? Can you his Claim this own. Come, give your all in gratitude, nor leave him thus alone. Alone, alone. He bore it all alone. He gave himself to save his own. He suffered, bled, and died alone. Look to the cross. Look away from the things you cling to. Let them go. The things in your life that you think you need, the crutches that hold you up, they do not hold you up. They keep you from running to the power and freedom of God. Jesus alone. Jesus alone. All you need is Jesus alone. As you Stand for our invitation. I'd like to offer the song, Jesus is all the world to me. Jesus is all the world to me. I like my joy. When I attend to him.